Hi and welcome to Prime Spot with Masazi. In this episode, we're hanging out with former Bafana Bafana, under 20 and under 23 defenders, Matthew Booth and Fabian McCarthy. They are going to be taking us down memory lane 20 years ago when Amad Luk Luk qualified for the Olympics for the first time. In that game against Brazil, which remains one of the memorable moments of South African football, they beat Brazil that had Ronaldinho 3-1. Thanks very much for your time. I think the first question I'm going to start off by seeing how good is your memory. What do you remember about 17th of September 2000? Uh, I think two things is that free kick here, uh, Quentin Fortune, and then uh, that tap in of Chipali Kolea. Uh, I think the after that, we went crazy, we lost it. You know, not on the field of play. Obviously, we're beating. Uh, you must remember, it was a favourite for the tournament. Uh, every media or what was Brazil, Brazil, Brazil. You, you know them when it comes to football. Um, and uh, I think it was our second game in the Olympics. Uh, I don't know how, but what happened? We thought the next game we draw will go to, to, to the next round, next stage. But I think we got too carried away because I think 3-1 in that competition, it's a score which now 20 years later, we're still waiting for somebody to, to, to equal it or to at least even it up. Yeah. But uh, for me, it's the best tournament I ever played. That game was one of the best games for me. And uh, I almost didn't make it. To, to, the, to the Olympics because of my club commitments in, 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 in Cyprus. But then I said to Mike Makap, I'm terminating this loan contract. There's no way I'm going to miss the Olympics. It must have been a disappointment for the Amat Luk Luk side that you guys didn't get out of the group and qualified for the next round. Yeah, so we, we really should have beaten Japan. Uh, we had, if you, go, if you go back to the highlights of that game, uh, we missed a lot of opportunities. Um, we gave away um, the first goal, uh, we should have, the ball came into the box and the defender should have won the ball and Emil was, Baron was caught off his uh, line a little bit. So that was a goal that we should never have conceded. Um, and then the second goal, I got dragged out of position, I was kind of at fault for that. And looking back, I can't understand why I did it. Um, we were chasing the game during that stage, but that's no excuse, you know. So there were just probably only two moments in that game where we were naive. We we should have done we should have done a lot better, you know. Um, it was very unlike us to be caught out like that. But that's often what happens in a big tournament. Um, you have to have a cool cool. Uh, calm um, attitude no matter how the game progresses um, but the fact that we qualified for the Olympics um, was an amazing uh, achievement in itself we were the first person first team to do it uh, we were in fact the first team to qualify for an intercontinental tournament you remember Bafana uh, hosted in 96 um, we were uh, the first uh, national team to qualify for um, the uh, African Youth uh, Champs in Morocco and subsequently because we came second in that tournament we got the silver medal we then automatically qualified for the World Youth Champs in 1997. Uh, so those two tournaments in particular and the tournaments like the Toulon tournament in France gave us the much needed experience going into the Olympics. Um, but still, there were little moments within that Olympic tournament where, yeah, looking back, it's just a little bit disappointing. Yeah. In that game against Brazil, you guys came up against a, a young man named Ronaldinho. Did you guys know anything about him at that time? Look, obviously we knew about him. I think that time he was at PSG. Obviously he was the up-and-coming next Brazilian star, superstar, big name. They were already raving about him. Media were already talking about him. But uh, we said that, look, 
we don't know him. He don't know us. <laughs> it looks like we were, you know, the same color. You know, with the same color, culture is not that much difference. We have skillful players here. So who is he? It's just the name and the jersey. And I think he had long hair by then. So we told ourselves, this Muna is not going to score, especially in Mina and Matthew, because Mbazo was playing right back. Me and Matthew were playing in the middle. He gave me a spy too. I made a foul, but then Emil Baron saved the free kick. That for me was like, yes, now I can double up my effort and stuff. Because normally, from my days at Celtics, when I come up against somebody, I told myself that this Muna is not going to score. If the coach say, Fabian, you're marking this one. From my amateur days, I know uh, if I get ahead of him and win my battles with him, then I can help my, my, my partners and then we can, you know, solidate it and everything. So I told myself, Matthew said, boss, this man is not going to score. Not at all. So we we'll have to, you know, double up and do it. Like I said, he gave me uh, a shibobo, but on the turn I hit him with the elbow. Free kick, I think 20, 20 some yards. It was just outside the 18 yard. You know me, I don't make penalties. It's very rare I make a penalty or maybe the referee doesn't like me, then he'll give a penalty. And then he hit a free kick. Emil saved it uh, down, very good save, good free kick. And then that, I think after that, the whole team, we got confident enough because I think by then the score, I'm not sure what, who we won up already, you know. But yeah, if you can get that club or get that game, uh, I, I'm trying to get the videos so that I can show my, my two boys, you know, because now you talk and say this guy became world player, you know, after two, three seasons and all. But I think myself, Matthew, Mbazo and David, we got his number. We, we were locking it. We blocked him from everything going to Emil. How important was coach Sheikh Mashaba in that team? Look, when it comes to Brash Sheikhs, I said he introduced me to professional football. He scouted me in Freiburg for this United Bank Challenge, where he had under-20s and stuff. Uh, I think I played one game under-20 against Mauritius. We were knocked out. It was home and away. I couldn't attend the away game because I was writing my uh, grade 11 exams end of the year. So I didn't play uh, that game. Uh, and I think for me, Brash Sheikhs is old school. He won't change and he knows how to get the best out of his players. For, for, for some reason, his man managing skills, it's so good that when you go out on the field of play, you want to break both legs for, for, for the man. He wasn't on the bench, but he had a chance to come in at halftime. And uh, if I can remember clearly, he was saying to us, it's not over, you can beat these guys. You know, Coach Kenny on the bench, you know, he's calm, he's a gentleman, he was talking nicely, but Coach Shakes came in with that presence after him and said, guys, I'm sitting there, let's win this game and stuff. And, and, and there was just a, a general belief, but I'm saying that, spirit, that team spirit we had, it, it was incredible. Man. I mean, uh, I, I had such team spirit at Sundowns, I had such team spirit at, at, at Kaiser Chiefs. And you know, when you are together, even in any company or anywhere you work when you and your workers or your guys you're working together and you're feeling each other and you want to grow together you will get success with whatever you're trying to achieve or, or, or challenge let me make an example we stayed at Milpak hotel for almost two years we were at that hotel every month we didn't even know the staff the cleaners everybody we know them from receptionists to the chef to everybody we know that people but we had two kumbis, so when we're off, one kumbi goes to Senton, one kumbi goes to Southgate. There's no East Gate or West Gate, or, no, 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 no. This kumbi goes that way, this kumbi goes that way. If Brashek says, Jens, we need to be back at five, Runa amongst us, we say, Jens, let's get back at half past four. And when we get back at half past four, we're chilling there by the pool at the bottom. Then Brashex is already sitting there reading a newspaper. He's waiting for us to see five o'clock, how are we coming in? So, so that's the trust and that's the relationship we had with Brashex. But I think also the under 20 team with Abu Matthew, Stiga and them that qualified Benny for, for, for the, 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 the World Cup. That 
the core of that team came over to the under-23s. I mean, I'm one of the guys who just came in, you know, while that uh, Amad Luk Luk project was, was on the go. And I mean, I fit it in well there. So, so that's, that's, that's what makes Coach Sheikh so special, man. He understand and he was thinking to say, I, I'm not running a military camp here, you know, we go for training, we do this, we do this, he give you free time. I know most of the Kryptonians, like before the game, they would like to go and tie the hair or, you know, go for a haircut or so. He will allow the guys to say, but we never take advantage of that off time or off day he gave us. We gave him that to say, you can trust us, we're coming ahead, maybe before our time and everything. And everybody is, it, it was, it was, an unbelievable team spirit. I think for me, if somebody had, I think Brashex was also saying it, he said, if he can get an investor that can buy all these players and put them in one team, he will win everything. He will conquer Africa with that team in five years time or so, you know. That's just the belief that we all had. Uh, you know, money wasn't the issue. We didn't want it to argue or talk about money. We said, Chance, this we're doing it for ourselves, we're doing it for our family, we're representing the country. Like I said to you, for me, it was a question of I terminate my contract in Cyprus. I, I went to the Olympics and I had no regrets about it. Yeah, look, I, I, I quite, um, we, in, in that team, we have some, some guys, quite a few guys who are not afraid to be outspoken. And I kind of learned something from them as well. And I've never been afraid to, to criticize our mother body. Uh, Safa, but I always try and do it in a constructive manner, you know. So you say this is wrong, but this is how I feel it can be or should be, and you try and offer them a solution. And the, one of the the things that I will always compliment Safa on doing is signing off on that deal with Sassel and Worldwide Sports for that six-year journey, and they've never done it again. And I, and I cannot understand it because. In football, you need consistency. If you speak to any footballer, uh, amateur or professional, they all have to admit that playing alongside familiar faces with a familiar coach will create a better product. You know? You'll become a better player, you'll become a better team. And so when you chop and change all the time, it creates uncertainty. You know? um, as a center back, I want to be playing with a regular centre back who I know, who I understand, and even more so as a, uh, the back four, being as regular as possible, it creates a good unit, and the same can be said for a team. So we were on this journey together for six years. The core of the team remained the same. We had uh, Brashek's coach Kenny and coach Tabo with us all along that 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 journey, and we had that small. A uh, bit of success, you know. So I can't understand why it hasn't been done again or replicated again. Um, and I would I would encourage them to do it again. And th there will be corporates out there who will buy into the vision uh, if it's if 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 the vision and the motivation and people at SAF are, are wanting to do it uh, in a proper manner. Yeah. Uh, and how good was that Ahmad Luk Luk team of 2000? And do you think that we'll ever put together a good junior national team like that one? Um, how good was that team? Wow. Uh, it was... It's, it's the best squad that I've... It's, the, it's probably the best youth... Uh, South African youth national team that I've seen. And I'm, not, and I'm not being biased because I was part of it. But that's a little bit unfair because we had those six years together, you know. Um, without a doubt, in South Africa, we have had the squads and we have the talent that can, that can outshine that team, our team, definitely. But they haven't been given that opportunity to do so. Um, that's the big difference. So that's why I say that that team is, is probably the, the best, uh, best one that I've seen uh, play together. And, uh, you know, just from an individual talent point of view, um, all of those players that you mentioned, we had a large, we had a, a large group of players who were playing overseas. 
and playing regularly. And then the local players were all playing regularly in PSL teams as well. So uh, we didn't have anyone that was sitting on the bench, you know, at their local teams. And they were being coached by good coaches in high profile teams. And that also definitely added to our squad. Um, and so when it came down to our training sessions, Sheikhs didn't really have to focus on any sort of technical aspects, you know. It was purely he could just sit down and talk about tactics and getting us motivated, which was a big, uh, a big positive for him. Yeah. Look, when it comes to talent or individual players, yes, we are replaceable. You can get better than us. There is better than Fabian, you know, the likes of, uh, can I say, this farmer boy that's playing at Barroca. There's uh, one from, from Supersport that's playing with Leighton Daniels. You know, young, talented boys that Cordinho and them, they're all there that has it. But my thing is, will they be united and will they fight? Remember the team you asked, Steven Pinar, Joseph Macanya, Tsovi Lakaze. Individually, they were better than the players we had in terms of talent one on one, pound for pound. More skillful, more, you know, more players were even playing in Europe in, 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 in that group, uh, Abu Skilo and them. But uh, like I said, the manager they had, the team that we had, the camaraderie, the spirit, you won't get that in any team. It's like they're saying 96, 96. No, 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 no. We can also make 2000, 2000, but the thing is we didn't win the trophy. So those seniors of 96, sometimes you, you, you said, no, it's fine. We, we respect you so you, because you got it. You got the trophy. You know, we didn't get it. Now the team that went to play against Abu Neymar and them or so, we, I, I know myself, met you also, we, we volunteered to say, give us a chance to come and talk to the boys. You know, my thing was just, guys, don't concentrate on Neymar and Brazil. Concentrate on the other two countries because those two countries will take you into the, to the next round. It's unfortunate this year, it's been postponed, but as we speak now, we are talking to Coach David Notwani to say, wherever you need assistance, we are available. We don't want money, we don't want anything. Call us, let's give us a chance to say what do you want us to do with these boys? Because that's my main thing is don't concentrate on Brazil or this big country in your group. Concentrate about the other two because there's six points, there's only three points or one point. Here, there's six or four points. And you know four points, you stand a chance to go through the next round. At that tournament, Italy had players like Pilo, Gattuso, Zambrota, Nigeria had uh, Celestine Babayaro, Cameroon had Samuel Eto, Japan had uh, Doshi Nakata. How important was being at a tournament with some of those players who went on to become worldwide superstars? Yeah, so some, some time ago I, t I tweeted, um, you know, 13 players from our under 20 team progressed through to the under 23 team. But only five players from our under-23 team actually became Bafana Bafana regulars. And I've always felt that there's too many uh, people that interfere when it comes to the senior national team. Um, and I'm not saying every single one of us should have progressed, but I think the core of that team should have had a natural progression into, into the senior men's team. And if that had happened, you would have found that more of us would have had the opportunity to establish our, ourselves overseas um, uh, as, a, as, a, as a stood. Quite a, quite a large percentage of us did go over, but um, yeah, I think it was only really Quinton and Benny that, that played, and Dalron perhaps, and Aaron McQuenna, you know, four or five who really played for well-established leagues and regularly for clubs in those leagues. Uh, but I felt, um, you know, guys, there were many guys in our team who deserved the same opportunity. But you can only really do that, do that once you start playing regularly for your national team and prove that you can compete in the Nations Cup and in the World Cup. Yeah, indeed. I, I'll, I normally say to the guys at any tournament, you know, being it in Kasi or so, but the World Tournaments like that, you normally get scouts coming in from the quarterfinal stage or the group, uh, you know, the knockout stages, coming in and, and, and watching and scouting. Like you said, the names you mentioned, 
it's world, world superstars. Our guys was already in Europe, the ones that you mentioned, Quentin was in Europe, Benny, uh, Mbazo was at Ajax, Delron was, was, was in Germany, Emil was in, in, in Norway, you know, so, so for some of us, I felt like I was even jokingly saying, Jens, maybe we were born in, 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 in the wrong country, you know, for some reason, because uh, I mean, I thought like maybe 85% 80, of that team could have gotten contracts in Europe irrespective of, of our size, of uh, the way we build or so, but just to say that because we competed with, with, with the best, like you said, the best age groups in the Olympics. And you know, if you, if you make your country's team and you go to such a tournament, you must be the best out of how many other boys that are there. So I'm saying that, yeah, I, I felt that, you know, 85% of us should have given contracts or should have went to Europe and played for, 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 for teams because I, I, I don't, I really don't know why we couldn't, but hey, I'm not, I'm African, I'm not complaining, I'm not crying, I was just saying maybe we were born on the wrong side of the continent because other guys that were from Nigeria, Cameroon or so, you know, the Etus, the Babayaros or so, they, 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 they made it big, but well, it is what it is. How important is most of the players who are there to come back and try and coach the juniors? Because you guys have been at the Olympics and you know how it feels to be there. No, I, th I feel it's very important that uh, not only our squad, but um, many ex-players who have had 15, 20 years experience, who have played in these big, uh, on these big stages, uh, should be giving back. But um, they haven't really been welcomed or encouraged to come back into the football industry. So <clears throat> that's why we've we've attempted to establish the South African Football Legends uh, organization as an NPO. Um, we are attempting to celebrate um, the class of 2000 uh, and celebrate our 20 year anniversary. Um, and then at a later stage, welcoming all ex-professionals, both male and female, to give them an opportunity to become educated and to invest and to get psychological help. Um, you, we all know what happens in, in retirement. So there's many things that we can do. Um, we can roll out uh, coaching programs at school and get, get those players back into the fold uh, because 15, 20 years experience shouldn't be wasted at home. You know? Um, there are a number of our, our squad that are coaching, um, also in the third and fourth um, uh, tiers. I know uh, Daniel Matsao and David Kanamir um, are coaching or have coached uh, in, in, at that level. Um, and so it's nice to see players become involved uh, as a coach, but also there's many opportunities in administration. There's many other different uh, bursary schemes and opportunities for players to get involved in, that's what we try, we want to try and encourage our players to do that. Um, but yeah, you're right. Uh, there's no, I don't think there's a, there's enough platform and there's not enough voices that are encouraging guys to to go that route, uh, which is a great pity. Yeah.